guys, and welcome to another week's episode of EFP Eat Fruit Pod. I'm your girl, Kay. I'm your girl, Killa. Four A's to you. And a big motherfucking happy birthday to a big dog, big OG, Killa. Happy birthday. Thankful for you. Happy yeah. Earth Strong. Like. I'm so you know four decades feeling well blessed feeling like it's up and it's stuck for real survive for real <laughs> for real so how happy was a special day to happy thanksgiving to all the canadians happy it thanksgiving chill, to y'all chill super chill like every meal in bed type situation you know, Listen. small luxuries. <laughs> the small luxuries for real. About to fuck up some more food for real. So, is there anything that um you have taken away so far this far that you could share with us with turning this beautiful age? <laughs> keep your heart light. You're going to have to clean off your spirit at some point. So keep your heart light facts love that that's beautiful so it technically was your birthday week as well as everything else happening so how was your week killa mm, uh, this week was as auspicious as every other week usually is or isn't it was just another week in life um it was definitely a countdown for me i don't know I can't say it was bad at all. It had like great energy to it. There was a lot of lessons winding down the 30s that were more than necessary. And yeah, it was just like another week in the whole. I'm always in advocacy for that. Um, my week went well. It was busy, but good. It was efficient. I think. Um, when I look at my to be list and my um, my to do list and my to be list, I really feel like I was everything that I needed to be. Um, I'll be transparent and sharing with you what my to be was for last week. And it was like to be happy, um, to be honest, to be supportive, to be positive and to be consistent. And I really feel like just personally, I did a successful job at doing that last week. And with that, I was able to accomplish everything that I had um, written down and some. So that was great. Um, this week, I have not yet. And it through <laughs> holiday, you get into a swing. I wasn't fully prepared how I should have been. I only, you know, I usually plan ahead and I'm kind of just on the fly, but that is okay because As soon as Kella and I come off, I'm going to get that done because today is technically my Monday. I really did take yesterday to just be lazy. Finally watched Lord of War on Amazon Prime. That movie was fire. I'm like, why did I take so long to watch it? And the guy was like, oh, I'm a warlord. And he's like, no, Lord, I prefer my way. Lord of War. I was like, yeah, there is a difference. And that he was. Have you ever seen that movie? Nope. Lord of War with um, Nicolas Cage. And he's the guy that was basically responsible for selling all the ammo. All and right. he basically found like a loophole. Well, I, I should say loophole because he definitely got arrested. But um, for now, just say loophole in the system where like anytime a war was done, technically they didn't really have anything to do with the straps. So he would have a way or people to get there, get the straps and resell them to like the highest bidder type thing. So, yeah, it was a whole game world that I never even really um, thought of. And he never really busts a gun, only once, at least in the movie. So it was based on a true story. So I found that um, quite interesting. Now, that sounds interesting. Now I actually would think about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was, it was serious. It was serious. Um, and then the strap that he ended up going down for wasn't even like, one of the big AKs or whatever that he was selling off in Sierra Leone. Like it was just, it was just bananas. Like, um, yeah, but it was, it was a great, um, movie and it gave me, you know, I like learning new stuff through 
cinema. So, <laughs> word. <laughs> Right. Um, and I also watched a corny movie, uh, Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts, because I love me a good rom-com. And it was like the part two. Have you ever seen that one? Maybe. It was like their try at doing the per- part two with like pretty women, but without like the same script. But it was all the same characters, Richard Greer, Julia Roberts, like all those people. And basically it was like this woman that like she gotten or got to the aisle the wedding everything like four different times and right like at the altar she just like "Eh, gotta go and like either hop on a bike hop on a horse like just totally run away and the guy would never hear from her again then journalist picks it up and then he's like oh you're a man a man eater and all this like sexist stuff and then she's like no I'm not like I'm gonna love like I love this guy and I'm gonna marry him and it ends up not marrying him but marries the journalist it was a whole a whole thing but yeah <laughs> yeah and mind your business <laughs> little 80s classic right I just yeah I love me some Julia Roberts I hope she really did say nothing racist and I watched that and I watched Beowulf which but, probably um, did right in the comfort of her home okay hey. um, I'll forgive you I'll forgive you if you make strides okay right if you make strides. we ain't gotta cancel you, you better so be. far she has it so speaking of um even though um it seems like both of us had quite week even though it was your birthday and I was over here doing my thing um black china not so quite um she was outside and there was a clip that was shared with her on social media. Um, Black China was outside. She was at the gate in the airport. And a, allegedly a fan, you know, must have approached her without a mask. And um, according to the reports, it says unvaccinated person. I'm not sure how they would have known that part. But I'm just, you know, that was what was reported. And Black China was going off. Like, she was screaming at level, like, 1 out of 10, 15 on this person, bare swear words, cuss words, they like she gave that man the fucking business or whoever it was, um, as her whole team was there just watching on. Um, <laughs> and that to me brought up the thought of just like, yo, this is exactly why I just stay the fuck up inside my house. And it takes a lot more than the usual to get me to come outside. I'm low-key like listening to it and I'm just like, are you one of those celebrities that like get paid to like push COVID misinformation? Like, was that what that was? Or was that, I get it. Like, she's Lydia on every frequency. It wouldn't be out of the ordinary, but like to me, that just sounds, look at at those facts that come out of that that aren't really facts. Like, well, the person was unvaccinated. It's like, how did you know? How did you know? And P.S. You're not supposed to know. So we're back to that. I don't know. This everybody just tired of the bit. It's the go away bit. Go away. But um, for China, I just we we know she Liddy. You know you we know dead ass. <laughs> She's Liddy. <laughs> and I just like that's that to me is her regular frequency like I don't see her not flipping out on somebody that like she felt was encroaching on her space plus like there's days she has really short fuses so like if you've watched the show you know like it's a zero to 60. Sometimes you just have to curve a thing, you know? Facts um but I was trying to just play devil's advocate and be on both sides because on one side, I'm like, nigga, well, if you paid for maybe a certain caliber of service at the airport, maybe you wouldn't have been in that position where someone that you feel was of general status could just approach you like that, et cetera, right? Um, number two, like, I feel like on the other side, going to the grocery store or going in certain stores to, like, get essential items that I need, because I'm still not at a stage yet, um, which we can talk about a later time if you want, where, like, I'm still conditioned as if there's lockdown with my shopping. I haven't yet. It's weird. Like it's kind of conditioned me to really like kind of stick with my essentials. And I felt less need for a lot of the things that maybe I would usually buy on the regular, a new top here, this there. Like now I'm just like, well, like what for? Like, you know, Um, but on that side of things where I'm just like people, I noticed even at the grocery store, like 
I had to do weird shit, like put my cart behind me just so that niggas are not breathing down in my neck because I know whoever's in front of me, I will keep like a decent, decent, a decent, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like space decent. between us, you know, but there's some people that they're just like, I feel like there's a underlying racism similar to like oh black people why don't you want to go to swim in the pool why do you want to go in the water why do you want to get your hair wet like nigga you know why can you just back like back up give me my space and if the airport if anywhere like why are you like no 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 so yeah I didn't feel like she had to turn up like that but at the same time like People need to give people their space. And like, yeah, we could joke and be like, oh, black people, uh, we already like, but not all people are like that. I'm not going to put that to race. I'm definitely a person like that. Give me my space. I want my air bubble. Can't be up in my zone. Like, especially if I don't be knowing you like that. Well, yeah, I'll give her that on the the fact that like, it's it, it wouldn't have been weird for her to go off on it. But then also I'm just like, I do feel like she would have done it whether it was about COVID and not being vaccinated or not. Like, cause it was just that it was just somebody encroaching on her personal space. So she decided to just lose it on. Right. I feel like, I feel like you like, you catch somebody on a, on a bad day and like, that's an easy thing to have happen though. You know what I mean? That part. Sorry. Just making sure. There we are, right? So yeah, um, I mean, so guys, if you're outside, I don't, I'm not, I've never been co-signed to people fighting outside the club. So I'm not gonna co-sign it, especially now with COVID. As we said before, and I still firmly believe, let's practice um like grace and um what is the word that we use? It started with a G, but like I'm I'm going outside being very mindful. Maybe times that I would have like taken the parking spot and be like, yo, go suck your mother. These days, I'm just like, you know what, go with that. I'll just park it in there. My ass needs to walk more anyways. That's that's a mindset I've really been treating outside with because a lot of, it's just different. It's we're heading into a new world. A lot of people are on go. And I don't need to test to see who is it and who is. I love my life. I want to live to see Killa's beautiful age and some. So um, as I'm learning, just not everything deserves my battle. As I said, solution maybe for Black China, you maybe should have had a more elite service, um, fly private. If you can't afford it, then maybe you just shouldn't be going, whatever the case is, period. I think all press is good press. Ain't no such thing as bad press. She's going to ride the press. Press, press, PR press. (laughs) Stay relevant, girl stay relevant girl and you know what just give me more colors and wigs and just keep looking awesome and like doing your thing jeez jeez what are you drinking today killa this is bartlett pear juice Mm. that sounds like it's kind of hitting is this a hangover concoction what's happening no i i drank very little that lifestyle like it suited me so i think i'm gonna keep it going the lack of alcohol and the you know I'm smoking with my little graba for now and like we're gonna go back to no tobacco no caffeine it, it it's you wake it, up food. Hmm? you feel like you're waking up I just feel like it was a lot easier to raise my frequency over the last month because it just wasn't in the picture in fact I know that for a fact like alcohol is a depressant I know good and well it was dropping me a few frequencies so it was nice to be up and buzzing very true very true I 1000% agree with that so um now we're going to get into um this week's actual episodes of pineapple fruit fruit and mind your business and I want to say um sorry I like totally forgot to mention but I want to say thank you to everyone who um had personally like DM'd or um, message on Instagram to let us know how much like uh, last week's episode and the last couple had really been like resonating and like sending healing to you. So I'll definitely share that with you um, when we're off camera, just keep like, cause it was like people's personal information, but um, 
truly thank you guys and like thank god that you know something is coming out of this that god has given me that is helping you know those of you out there so i'm grateful for that yeah and in church so <laughs> um killer <laughs> um here is the question right now oof, i don't even know where to start all right what were we keeping the investment one no we were keeping that for another week all right so i think it was friends who plug you recommend you remind you you can do anything those are real friends shout out to ronnie brown um do you agree with that statement or what do you think of it um yeah there's definitely validity to that statement good friends do advance you in many different ways. Absolutely. What do you think? I agree with that. Um, I and I and I feel like it also doesn't feel like a task. Like when you read this list to someone that isn't your friend, this could feel like a lot. Oh my god, this is a lot. Why do I do all this? When it's actually your friend, I feel like those things are already sprinkled and like woven into the friendship, or at least it should be if it's a healthy one word I mean I think that also goes along with like having a circle and like even claiming like who is in your circle you know you'd hope that it would be a whole like well not a whole a small a handful because more than a handful is a waste like a handful of people who um you would be able to check yes to on all those questions you know five good men six good men maybe I don't know um and when you say that, that's what I think of is just like, you know, you keep your circle small and concentrated and chances are like, you're going to get that kind of synergy going throughout the camp because anybody who's not about that just won't be able to hang like, the ball off kind of thing. Um, I say it also from personal experience because my, my core group of friends have been my same friends since I was 12 years old. We know each other's families, like I can run up in any one of my friend's mother's house and they'd feed me same goes for my mom. She would feed any of them like, um, yeah, so I, I have to look at the fact that I, I really had a strong foundation in friendship. And when you're talking about friends that plug you or friends that invest in you, I have friends mm -hmm. that have heavily invested in me and like definitely um, added value to my life and value to me as a person. So yeah, like that, that to me is a, is a question that would be near and dear to my heart, just off the strength that I had such a, I have such a good squad, you know? Okay. Your squad is up. Okay. So for me, I'm in a different position than you, right? Where like, I don't, and I'm, I'm not sure if you guys out there can relate, but like, I don't have a set of friends where everyone know each other. And this is like, the circle. I'm that kind of person where like individually I have some really like individually with people I have like or maybe two in a pod over here. I have really like solid relationships with people but like I know all those people are connected to me but they are not like necessarily like connected to each other. So with that being kind of like my friendship structure, like I know I can like chill this person, but this group friend don't know, like, you know, but it's not on no old friend friend. It's like people that I would consider my circle and I know they're my circle, but they don't really necessarily interact with each other. So yeah. um, in that sense, I, I, it's, it's, I find I'm always kind of networking my friends, if that makes sense. I'm like, I have this, I have this for this really great, like, you should meet her and do like this because I know how great those people are individually. Yes, sometimes I made the mistake where I should not have connected um, certain worlds and it's turned to shit. But <laughs> you you live and you learn, right? I'm not wondering what if. Like I know what I know exactly what happened at the end of that <laughs> story. But um, in that sense, for me, I'd be like, it's it's. It's, it's, I don't know, I'm in a weird space because I feel like people do 
plug me in and recommend me but it's not like when as you said you have a, a niche of people that you guys all went to high school together whatever I have one best friend and she does not have social media and her support looks different you know what I mean so it would never be an argument to be like oh you never repost me on social media like that conversation between us is actually quite dumb because she doesn't even have a Twitter, a Facebook, a Instagram, like a nada. <laughs> you know what I mean? What she has is my number and my address. So um, with that, it's just like, I wanted to say that to say people shouldn't look at their friends. I feel like social media is the only place, you know, especially I can see how that can fuck with a lot of people's way of thinking. That shouldn't be the only place that you, um, acknowledge or receive like people whatever even for my birthday um and I didn't even really share this with you Killa but I like was really tearing up when I was listening to the voicemail that you left me for my birthday and it like really really made me happy because I was like one I know that you were in you're in currently like your hiatus and you're not on social media right so like I felt already special that like you made the time to be like, okay, I'm going to link you on your day. And then as well, because like, I kind of was feeling the vibe. I was already kind of on a vibe. I don't know if it was you, but like on an early 2000s vibe where niggas was like, leave a voice on your phone. So like, it really made me like really happy. And that was like one of like my top gifts, I would say, which is like, as I said, I appreciate the silly things. (laughs) You have to practice gratitude things like that oh, that's awesome thank you so much I but it her. really did it really did you know so like your friend plugging you your friend recommending you um your, or your friends reminding you that you can do anything that that looks different with with each like relationship or person you can't like put yes you have your language of love but like you can't necessarily always put that like on someone word yeah <laughs> Word. but then again like if if you have friends like that hopefully you'll take you'll take cues to be a friend like that and like you'll understand the give and take that the synergy that as well that as well for real right because I also have a friend like she's so dear to my heart but like she never wants to come to my spot. She, matter of fact, she doesn't want to go anywhere. She wants to be at her fucking yard. But what she says, she will do. She finds her way to get home and she will always feed you. That's how she suckers you in. And so I know that, that is like her way of love. And never am I, I know our relationship. So I'm not insulted because I know that is her just as an individual. You know what I mean? And I don't know where that stems from, but I know that her way of being like, yo, I will make sure once you get here, like, you will be good. You will want and lack for nothing. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that. And sometimes you need those friends, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the, friends, the friends that turn into family. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So <laughs> when my mom so- stops um, trying to talk her white voice, even though it really ain't that white around you, that's how you know you, you have hired the family now. <laughs> She can no longer talk to you like it's Mel and it's just straight patwa. Yeah, you are loved. <laughs> no longer speaky spooky. Right? <laughs> so shout outs to the real friends there. And on the other side, if you're someone that you're looking at yourself and you're like, damn, I know I haven't been a good friend. I've definitely been guilty of that. Like, and I thank God for even like one of my besties where like, she understands that she understands the zone of life that I'm in right now and it's never something that I'm doing maliciously to like offend her I really just get caught up with she knows everything you know what I mean so when she'll hit me with a message and it always ends up being on the perfect day and she'll be like I know that you are busy I know that you have xyz to do but I need to hear from you in the next 48 to 72 hours proof of life like she'll send something cute like that have me laughing I'll be like you're right like I've been a shitty friend I haven't even messaged you yet this week to see if like you get up and brush your teeth like what is wrong with me so you know it it really is a give and take and and those are she's taught me in a lot of ways I don't even think she's known to be a better friend and just because you don't have something tangible to give you don't know you can give in plenty of other ways 
you know, it's not necessarily based on another thing I see as a trend, like, People are watching these celebrities giving each other like Fendi boots and Chanel purses and brick and bags. And they're like, yo, if my friend ain't cashing me out or handing me keys so far and then it, nah, nigga, like <laughs> there's a reason why those people can even get to a point where they do that together. When niggas are chaining niggas, even in that world, like, and, and mans be bond mine off and the mans that maybe get the chain and the crew and the mans that don't, like you can't because you don't know the amount of work that man has put in to earn that chain. You feel me? So. So mind your business. <laughs> How do you feel? Um, do you feel like you're a good friend, Killa? I feel like I'm a loyal friend. I don't think I'm always a good friend. I think I try to be a good friend. But I also feel like my friend's I've been pretty lenient and like accepting of who I am as well and vice versa. I feel like straight up because you're just like talking bare ass in my air right now. Um, you're an amazing friend <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, in the span of time that I've even known Killer, I can't really tell you one conversation where she's like um, brought up anyone's name to me or be like oh this person that person that is one and if someone were to say that about you I'd be like nigga you lying because that that isn't your teeth okay so one already killer keeps secrets as far as i know right um she really like is an amazing listener like and i and i and i'm sorry for all the times that i've linked you and talked for an hour straight and you literally just said yeah and then <laughs> that was a phone call but that to me those are things that like shit like you can't you can't put a value like on that you know what I mean um things with womanhood you know where it's just like not necessarily having a big sister or my mom knowing that I'm even interested to like learn certain things about womanhood or when it comes to my body like he'll put me on game for that so in terms of the things that I would say is a great friend you know what I mean I hate a person that like links down my phone and acts like they're my man or my partner so I'm, I've never, ever, 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 ever gotten that from Killa, um, which I appreciate that greatly, right? She's a friend that I feel like you could not see in like two years. And when you see her, she's not acting to you like it's been two years. Like it's, it's a great vibe. So yes, I used her as a live example, but those are some of the qualities that I feel like makes a makes a good friend so no I won't let you get that off wait yeah <laughs> okay well that'll make a good impression <laughs> right. right you can be humble I will just tell the truth over here <laughs> right and like she's always um never not plugged me into like her world and what's been going on and letting me know, here's the next important, ooh, such important thing. And yes, Killa, you do this. And I appreciate you for it. And people need to implement this a lot. Is like, you told me when your no is a no and your yes is a yes. You, you like, you set your boundary. And you're like, how does that make a good friend? It makes an amazing friend. I never worry about Killa backstabbing me or doing shit that like, you know what I'm saying? Because she's been vocal about nah this this ain't it yeah this is it and that is someone that I guess that does that go under the loyalty but I wouldn't even say that's loyalty that's like you just being like I would say so like yeah. This yeah. yeah okay all right so yeah like and those are all things that you know and see I have yet to list anything that has to do with her putting money and bear blessings in my pocket well she put bear blessings in my pocket but in ways that are not yeah so yeah <laughs> hello EFP all right guys <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> all right so yeah I don't know what else um, would you say on this topic Killa I feel like I'm spoiled <laughs> out here being spoiled like, my friends are the bestest I'm the bum of the crew it makes me so happy 
You deserve it though. You do more for people. I think you even realize at times. My, my bitch is A1 and I'm bum crumbs and I'm proud of it. Like kill is the type of person. Sorry, that was the last thing I said. That was the last thing I was like, okay. And this is very important. People's respect, right? I'm learning. Um, yes, I may be a bit old to be learning this lesson, but I'm really, really learning the importance of how serious your name is out here and not even the validity of your name, but the respect or the weight that your name has. And let me tell you, anybody that Killa has told me, let this person know that I sent you or you can let them know that like, you know me. The treatment that I've gotten from those set of individuals is as of like, I've known them my whole entire fucking life. So that in itself to me speaks to the respect and the type of individual that she is that you are sorry I'm talking to talking about both right but like <laughs> like seriously and and that's something that as I said you can't you can't buy that you can't buy that oh geez <laughs> just holding her head down. You know, just gotta stay humble that's what you do that you did that all right so moving forward since we have nothing more for friends but definitely plug your friends recommend them and remind them that they're doing great things you know what i mean remind them that they're doing great things especially being your friend (laughs) being my friend is a task in itself (laughs) so remind your peoples all right um so the next part of it was basically am i oh sorry that was that was was that this week Am I too comfortable? Yes. Yeah, okay. So am I, sorry, I didn't break it apart properly. <laughs> so am I uh, too comfortable, right? And that is such a broad statement. But when you think about it, right? In life, we, we want all these things or we ask these things or you want things to be different or whatever the case is, but you're so comfortable in your in your habits and what you're doing all the time that like it's never going to give you the result that you want if you're just staying complacent like where you're at so when you ask yourself when you like you want to change in something ask yourself am I too comfortable an easy example your hair you look in the mirror you're kind of uh, on what you see you're like oh I want something different well if you're doing the same center part um low ponytail every goddamn day it seems as if you are too comfortable with that hairstyle. You can try another color, try another, maybe a side part, you know? So that is a very basic example, but <laughs> what do you um, think of the sense of being like comfortable or being too comfortable in things, Killa? Well, they say that women uh, don't change their look. They get stuck in the look where they feel the most attractive. Mm. So it's interesting that you use that as an example. I did not know that. Yeah, like you see a woman and she's like looked the same for like 20, 30 years. And it's just like, well, she's stuck in that spot in her mind. Like that's when she was her most attractive. So she holds on to that. You're right, com- being um too comfortable or complacent, like that's a that's a pretty it, it can be a broad topic. Um I feel like in some places it might be easier to not get caught up in complacency, whereas in others, they it might not align with your strengths as much, and you might you might like give it that leeway to to keep you comfortable yeah. and be complacent. For me personally, there's a, a lot of places where I would never consider myself comfortable at all. And there's other places where I have to look at results and say, I must be comfortable right now. So that's, that's me and comfort. Cause you can be comfortable. Sorry, Hilla. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you can be comfortable in trauma. Like being comfortable in something doesn't necessarily mean you are in a good (laughs) space or that's where you should be. Like, and that's the thing about comfort, like, you do tend to run to it, but it's something, it always has to be fleeting in order, in order for it to be healthy, mm. to be honest, like, change, change is the only thing that's really guaranteed in life, well, mm. one of the things that are guaranteed, and 
it's, it's like you do have to, if you need change, it means you do need to usher in new energies. And that complacency, like that comfort, that level of comfort that you're talking about, that we're kind of agreeing on right now, that, that ends up being a block because you're now holding on to a space and a place that like, it might not be for you to be holding on to. You know, the difference between being static and being dynamic. Yeah. 1000. And like a healthy question I was thinking to ask, like, in that is like, don't just go out there all willy nilly and get all crazy and be like, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. <laughs> you go out there and get shy or something. Just relax. Okay. Um, <laughs> just relax. Okay. But ask yourself when wanting to make that decision, maybe, <laughs> is this worth me stepping out of my comfort zone? Right. Ask that question. So, for example, um, as I said before, I never used to wear makeup, heavy tomboy. I know it's hard to believe right now, guys, but heavy tomboy did not wear makeup, did not have a shape on the brow, not a thing. OK, and <laughs> now we're here today. And that was part of me being like, yes, partially being bullied, partially extend from a place of people. I felt they were questioning my sexuality and I wasn't comfortable in standing up for myself because especially in those times, obviously I'm not the same person I was back then. So what you, what was on the outside, especially in high school is a lot of how people treated you or assumed you were on the inside. So when I'm wearing track suits and baggy jeans, and as I said, I was very uncomfortable with my chestiness. So I was wearing things that made me comfortable, but to others, um, especially because I'd be really friendly or like rousy with people. That's just my personality. So if it's another woman now is being perceived as like a butcher or a dyke or something that I just didn't subscribe to. So I asked myself like, okay, am I too comfortable? Like just like this, my mom, like everyone will complain, but I'm the kind of person I don't want to do it um, for others, similar to the backseat, right? I want to do it because I know it's something like I really want to do. And with that decision, I said, all right, is it worth me stepping outside of my comfort zone? Is it worth me learning these girly things and conforming, I guess, to being a girl the way people want me to? And these were times when I played sports heavily, right? <laughs> like practice team, practice game, like all of that. So with that being said, now I am at a place where I'm comfortable doing both. And I did step up. I do step out of my comfort zone, which is getting all like dolled up for you guys. Or when I know I have something special, I will get dolled up. But best believe when I'm in the crib. All right. <laughs> is that K or Kareem? I don't know. But <laughs> I be comfortable. <laughs> I be comfortable in my house, God damn it. And that like even uh, sex education, spoiler alert, uh, the new season, I love the fact that they had a lot of binary um students in this season of the show because it got to a part where like the job was like really starting to get attracted with this girl but like she would never do it non-binary like he had to learn that and it's just like yeah nigga you really have to admit that you're just fucking with me because you really can't tell if I'm a female or a male which it shouldn't matter right so yeah yeah <laughs> well all right that's a whole lot of stuff then. Um, K or Kareem, you don't know. You don't know. Well, honestly, that's the way you should be in the crib. You coming in my house. This is my door. That's my carpet. <laughs> coming in here. Like, I've got to kill this house and be like, yo, you got a big t-shirt? Came in from the outside. Okay, like, outside ready and came around house like nigga do you have a big t-shirt to try to give me something cute i'm like nigga do you have something a bit more okay i gave her a fucking polo shirt like i gave her a black undershirt from polo that's what i gave her with a little red horse mat and she's like i can't wear the polo thing in the house i'm like it's literally an undershirt <laughs> and what would you, i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> like you want me to pull the rag out from underneath the toilet is that what you want you don't want that take this 
I was like, all right, can we go set my guests at your house? I'm like, all right. And she just kept throwing them back. It's like, these are too nice. And I'm just like, we're the ones with the holes in it under the arm. Like, give me those. Like, they're all integrated. Like, I think you threw some of those back too. I don't know. Right. Right. <laughs> so, is there an example maybe that you could give us something that you kind of like maybe dibble dabbled with something outside of your comfort zone or be like, Mm, I find it hard to actually like pluck that one out of my ass off the strength that I'm really good at like readjusting where and how I stretch mm. to fit, like the situation that I'm in. And one that's thing something that I you learn. Something that I learned, but it uh it's interesting because it's it's just me having that conversation with myself where it's like, can I humble myself to this process? And it's like on same thing, is it worth it on one side? I'm going to have a new skill. Like, how do I feel about this new skill that I may or may not get if I can humble myself to this process? And then on the flip side, what am I going to be doing if I don't like step up to this as a challenge right here, right now? And it's like, well, you stay the same, not the worst. Cause maybe maybe tomorrow's your challenge and today's just a day and it's going to pass you by that way. But usually that's, that's that's the crossroad that I come to whenever I know that I'm about to have to face a challenge and that's just me like opening up myself to know that I have to stretch or there's going to be a strong possibility that I'm going to be stretching in the near future and if the answer is yes it's worth it I'm stretching but I'm also I'm also I'm also going to adapt to whatever those needs are so I can become that person that can be about it live about it learn about it speak about it all that good stuff so that's typically my process if I feel like, I don't know, it's not about being comfortable or being uncomfortable, but like, I guess, taking the challenge to not be complacent, you know? I want to ask you, right, not that this is your example at all, but um, as I said, I've seen you like videos of you. I've, matter of fact, been in fashion and some other wormholes on Instagram and seen a bitch walking on the runway. And I'm like, is that, is that killer? What? And I'll send it to her. She's like, yeah, that was, that was me. <laughs> I'm like, girl, <laughs> right? But with walking the runway, that's like something that like I've always admired um, those women for because, lad, if you stumble, if you trip, if you like, you know what I mean? It's so much pressure more than people give credit to. Have you ever, um, like, if I could just ask kind of like, what's that mindset of like being behind the stage knowing that you're about to have to like, step onto the runway and like kill it for these seconds or whatever well I'm gonna start by saying I have gone on on the runway and like my shoe wouldn't stay on my foot and I was tripping and all sorts of crazy shit like shit happens (laughs) shit (laughs) Shit happens but I I can like document that from like the first time that I ever had to go out and being super super nervous because I didn't have any previous experience in doing it but looking around and always kind of feeling like if I'm surrounded by humans and humans are doing it, it's doable. Mm. So I should be able to do it too. Um, bar, bar, hold up. <laughs> so if I'm surrounded by, you did that so fast. If I'm surrounded by humans and humans are doing it, then. I must be able to do it too. I'm a human. Like, love that. Bars. It's gotta be possible. Like there's, there's a way because a bag of humans are doing it right there in front of me. And I, I try to draw on that. Um, one thing that I have learned over the last four decades is to have kindness and patience with yourself whenever you're taking on those type of changes and not to like bring too much anxiety into making your change or getting your change out. Mm. So maybe I wasn't going to be or feel as confident on the inside when I was walking maybe the first three times. But like after that, I had a nigga like Norwayne come to me after a show and be like, all right, baby girl, let me break it down for you. When you walked out the first time, A, B, C, D, you were on point, you killed it, you came back, you did your pirouettes, you did, you just, you gave, you gave everything and it's good. Second time, I don't like the way the lighting was on you, but on off the strength of that, your, your strut wasn't on the same, blah, 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 blah. Come to my office, come to my office on Thursday because I need to teach you how to walk. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of, put myself out there and let myself, like I said, I humbled myself. So I let myself almost get to that place where like, maybe you would feel embarrassed. 
Mm. You know what I mean? But like, I just took it as my teacher. And then Norwayne became my teacher. You know what I mean? Like Norwayne not even was never ever my agent. Like that man, that man just took me in because he just felt like we had a vibe and we totally did. Um, <laughs> shout out to Norwayne because his birthday is this Thursday. Libra love, Libra light, Libra energy, Libra greatness, just like effervescent. Um, yeah, so like in terms of walking, I just remember there came a point where, like I said, one day I looked around and I was just like, I've been doing it with all these hoes. And that was it. It wasn't, it wasn't like, okay, I gotta see what everybody else is doing. You know, um, when I'm when I'm in um rehearsals, I have to really like wear my glasses to make sure that I can see where all the all the points are and da 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 da. And I have to take this really seriously and I have to soak everything up. And one day I just came in and I was just like, I don't even like wearing my contacts because they make my eyes like swell at some point after having all that makeup like poked into Hold my your face. Eye. Yeah. And I was just like, it became like a blessing in disguise because once I sat down and figured out what the arrangement and what the production was for the show, glasses coming off, contacts are coming off, which means I don't see anything. And then it just <laughs> became like a whole lot of fucking fun. And then yeah. I see like people like Stacey McKenzie just getting tanked before a fucking show. Not because she's not a professional, just getting, but like getting effervescent and having so much fun and just enjoying it and going out and killing the show and like bringing a whole vibe to the building. Mm. like I, I I I I had a lot of teachers <laughs> and that's basically what it is like if you humble yourself and try like you'll get what you need to continue expanding and that's part of stepping out of your comfort zone you already humble yourself to know that I don't know this like what I'm stepping into but I'm open and I'm willing to try um as um you guys don't know it at that extent but I really really um, love the whole like food world and like I really dive myself into like chefs or different like cuisines from around the world and God is going to bless me that you know <clears throat> etc but um with that even that is something that I step out of my comfort zone with a lot right because you have things like tartar things like that like they're not typical like cuisines but that's a part of me just through doing research and being a real like food lover similar to how you have like wine lovers and things like that like that is something that I continuously step out of my comfort zone and it's 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 an experience for me you know what I mean it's it 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 brings me to some of the people or led me to some people that I can never like replace right so yeah man just question yourself if it's worth you stepping out of your comfort zone but try it because that evokes change like and life is ever evolving, ever changing. You cannot stay stagnant. Um, even with, even even with money, right? Even with money, they teach you you cannot just be stagnant with the money. You have to allow money to flow. You have to put money in places where it can evolve and grow. Because if you leave it just where it is, it will depreciate, right? So with your human experience, if you just, it's so heartbreaking to me when I meet people that have never even gotten a passport. They never even left the town, left their neighborhood for that matter of where they're from, you know? So it's very important, a part of that life experience, that human experience to like step out of your comfort zone. Absolutely, 100% thousand okay so um with that as well we must check our motives right how often do we check our motives or really ask myself why am I doing this right and if you listen to the things that Kelly and I discussed previously with our examples already you should kind of already be formulating um answers to that question right but even with put it to your business right why am I doing this? Why am I making the choices we make? Even down to when I get McDonald's, I have to be checking my motive, checking my, my whys and, and, and what, right? When I'm looking down at my list, I'm like, girl, you're trying to lose weight for real. You said you're trying to lose 22 pounds. You cannot lose 22 pounds if you keep deciding to get the fucking Big Mac and large fries. So why are you ordering this right now? You have better options. You have stuff in the fridge. You have things that you can put together or things that are a better option because money isn't the reason why you're choosing McDonald's because it's not even cheap to begin with anymore. So check your motives, right? Because your motives are going to help align you with what you are trying to accomplish and what's really in here, what you're really like putting out there. Um, what do you feel about like that killer and like checking 
our motives and really having that conversation with ourselves and God and being like, I think questioning your questioning yourself is always key. Like, um, I got the same message, like exactly a year apart. And it was think spiritually, not carnally. And I never really under, I didn't understand it in the moment, but, um, see this is what happens when i smoke early in the episode there was a whole tie-in um it'll come to you <laughs> and it's there it's like at the tip of my um that's it okay she back she back <laughs> she got it right, well, it's 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 always wise to, to question yourself don't be afraid to do it like it's kin to looking in the mirror but also in anything you do if you if you're sowing a seed if you're making if you're making a decision you're kind of sowing a seed you know what i mean like you're expecting it maybe to come into harvest a little quicker than the average plant, but like you're you're sowing a seed so you do want to get down to the heart of the matter like it keeps you really honest it keeps you really honest and it also ties into vulnerability. Um, maybe what you would consider shortcomings or things that you would need to work on in yourself. It, it helps you face those things. And as opposed to those maybe causing like uh, a, a trauma flare up or a response, you look at it and you look at it almost just as something that's being put out on, the, on, the, on, a, on a board or on the table. And you're like, okay, so I do have to assess that. Should that be here? Maybe it shouldn't be here anymore. Now I need to go put some steps together. So I definitely think that checking your motives is something that like you should be practicing daily throughout throughout your lives. Just like, yeah, God is going to be your ultimate compass, but you are responsible for knowing yourself. I remembered shit. Ah. <laughs> Facts, right? Because, and Kilda and I are going to be talking about this another week. We have a revenge episode coming for you guys and I'm really excited to get into it but I'll just hint into it to say like you know if your motive is to make someone else jealous I don't even agree with what you're asking God for to come to fruition because mm -hmm. then it's not really grounded on something it's not it's not grounded in like the true as like you know what I mean just things things that are rooted in gratitude versus things that are rooted out of like anger envy or jealousy like it's two different experiences, two different things. So like one, it will look like it's flourishing, but it will never really flourish the way it should or could, in my opinion. It'll flourish. It's just it's not going to flourish the way that it should, but it will flourish and it will become your thing or your things. And chances are you're just going to act like you don't know how you got there or how mm. you ended up with those things. Mm. Facts facts so um when we get into now we ask god for like after we've checked our motives we're willing to step out of our comfort zone um we got solid people around us that plug us in all of that now that that to me in itself is a whole force field of power behind you right but when we really reflect on be like all right god i'll use the easy example um i want a mill a million dollars, um, which is not much these days, it would be like five mil, but for sake being, a million dollars um, is not just a million dollars. That's also like the power of having a million dollars. It's kind of like those people that win the lottery. There's like a whole pack of people that come and approach you and offer all these things to you that you probably never even heard of or experienced in your life because they know the power that you now possess. Money is not even money. And it, it's, it's, what it represents right so can god trust you with that power can can like i be trusted with really running a fortune 500 company right obviously encompassed in that is a lot of tests a lot of trials a lot of things that really will show your character right but if your motives are not rooted in the correct place why should god give you access to that power yeah um I feel what you're saying on that for me like when, when it comes to God's power like God aligns you to tap in you know what I mean like God God fits you in as like a part of a little harmony in his whole 
So it's like, when, when you speak of that, it ties back to the whole, like, are you checking your motives? Cause right then and there, like we spoke about humility. We spoke about like decision making and coming down to like the heart of the matter when you're making your decisions, you have to start, you have to start recognizing your intentions when you do that shit. Mm-hmm. And like, that does help you in the long run. Cause like, like I said, God, God, so God doesn't just say, oh yeah, 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 it definitely happens here in my pocket. Just here, take it. Yeah, whatever. Cool. No, he, he, he puts you through the refiner fire, refiner's fire. He makes sure that you're aligned to be able to receive what it is that you're ask, asking for. And I feel like if you were doing those, those things that we spoke of before, the, the checking your motives and humbling yourself to the process and like getting the most that you can get out of it in the most positive way possible, then by the time you've gone through all those things and you have your personal walk with God and God's ready to stay, you are tapped in and now have complete access to my omnipresence and my, um, my omnipotence and my, and my, and my never ending knowledge, you should be that person tapping in and like almost having like the keys mm. in my opinion. Yeah. So it's one of those things like if you're doing the work, you should be able to make good use of whatever God gives you. Facts. Facts. But like, you know, as well, when I think about we're praying for things and we can be really selfish when speaking with God, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's a point of like reflection and just being like, all right, if I really give you all these things that you're really asked for, what are you going to do with it? How, how is that going to look? Is it going to be fire and brimstone out there? Are you actually going to, that's even another thing. There's a set of people that, for example, can I please have a hundred dollars? Not to say you always have to tell people what you're asking for, but can I have a hundred dollars to do what? Oh, to do this, this, this. And then when they get it, it gambling, um, fast food consumption, things that nothing that will get you to see a return of that hundred dollars, you know, mm-hmm. and there it is. You got the power. You got a hundred dollars worth of power right there. What'd you do with it? whisked it and whittled it away and the more I'm starting to reflect and and think about that and really being mindful of what I'm doing I see the baby steps as I said I told you guys my my to-do list and my to-be list this week when I really start doing those things I'm seeing how it's affecting that change in my life allowing me to step out of my comfort zone in responsible ways but it's like To me, it feels like everything is clicking and everything's, oh man, everything's just super clicking, but who am I? Is God saying that things are really like in alignment in the way the things I wanted you to do it. So now I'm, as you said, Killa, I'm letting you tap more into my power and have access more into me. You know what I mean? And that is like something that I feel like a lot of us play myself really need to like add as part of our questions. You know what I mean? When, when seeking to like evolve and stuff and with every new level, it is a new amount of power and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, I have business. It has almost nine K followers on one social media platform. That's not even detailing everything. Right. And that's access to 9,000 of the 7 billion, however many people are on this earth you know if really the nine obviously we know nine thousand people aren't tuning in whatever algorithms all that shit but like hypothetically speaking nine thousand people are tuned in and hearing what is happening here who i i can't to me personally i cannot be posting certain things and sharing certain things because i'm being mindful of the power and the access that god has allowed me to tap into or been a part of or allowed this amount of set of eyes to be like, all right, this is something that you should be aware of or that will let tap into your conscious or subconsciousness. Like, and to me, that is a huge responsibility. That is a huge, it's a huge responsibility. And I don't take that lightly, you know? So with, I can't speak for others, right? I can only use myself or what I actually know as examples. So for you guys out there, 
when you're building and you're you're paying these odd people and whatever, run your numbers up, check your motives. What are you necessarily running up your numbers for? Right? You want you want to reach a hundred a hundred thousand people to say what? To do what? To lead them where? Then again, it's social media. You're going to do that for whatever the fuck you want to do that for. And if you have the abundance to do it, you're just going to do it for whatever it is you want to do it for. Well, for me, yeah. Facts. For me, I, I, I see it as social media is just an easy access tool to allow me to get to more people that I can't physically touch at the moment, but allow me to make those connections until I am at that stage. But 1000% not everyone looks at things that way and that is like the real world and real life to them you go and tell people on the platform good morning before you even hug the people you're in the house with check your motives (laughs) check your motives the truth but then that's it that's what it is like your outcomes will help you Mm. Mm. Your outcomes will out you. Um, that is definitely the name for this week's episode. <laughs> Writing that down before I forget. Um, your outcomes will out you. Like that's that's the best way to um, sum it up, in my opinion. Like you you hit the nail on the head with that because once again, I cannot you know even more and more I look at church right. That's something that a lot of us can compare that we like. My nigga, you have a solid amount of people leaving their homes on a schedule to come to a place that you got every week. A lot of y'all don't take that responsibility as heavily as you should and get complacent in or comfortable in the routine of it all. When that is like, you're literally there helping people, leading them through spiritual guidance, or at least should be. I feel like even with that, like, that's like this old, like, where does religion meet spirit? Not necessarily spirituality, but where does religion meet spirit? Because, like, I, I've said it before that there's, there's, like, older Christians, older Christians that I don't really feel have, like, a really personal connection with God like their their connection is definitely through religion so they tend to know god through the scope of whatever the church is telling them god is or who god is and that 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 is sometimes just like the downside to, to that church situation i do definitely believe that you should be in congregation with the saints definitely believe that but there's there's two things, even just from sitting down in church and listening to sermons that I've gotten. And it's just like, don't, don't go to church just to get a word. Like, yes, you are going to church to get a word, but don't just go to church to get a word. You're supposed to like be down to live a word. If you're going to church to get refilled by a word, it means you weren't living the word from the last sermon That's right. throughout the week. That was one. Yes. And basically just getting that personal relationship with God. Like tagging onto you're not taking the sermon throughout the whole week. You're not reconnecting with God on your own. Mm. No one says you have to go to Bible study. Like not everybody wants to go to Bible study, but like pull your Bible out <laughs> or pull your Quran out or pull, pull out whatever metaphysical document you know you're supposed to be looking towards to get, to get some kind of like understanding pull it out and like read a few chapters. Think about what, what, what you read. Maybe translate something that you read. Make sure you understand all the words that are, com- that are, that are comp- or that comprise that, that sentence or that paragraph. Like actually dig into the word a little bit. And like, there's just, there's other ways, but you literally like, maybe you take some time for your day to just pray. Maybe you have your prayer time. Like you do need to go out and have that one-on-one time with God. And those, those are things that like you do even when you're not in church. So that when you're in church, like church is, church is something that is just, it's fulfilling. It's a bonus. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It, exactly. It's fulfilling for you, but like also you're bringing that energy to anybody else who needs, who needs to know God in that building. You know what I mean? Like everybody's in different places in their, in their spiritual walk with God. Maybe you're, maybe you're now an influence for somebody who's a little bit greener in their walk than you are. Maybe also you're, you're, you're showing some sort of poise that somebody who's older than you didn't are older in their walk than you are, didn't have when they were at your point in time. You know what I mean? Like you just don't know how you're going to influence anybody else around you. And then that's the point of being with the saints is that you're supposed to be on one accord and you're supposed mm-hmm. to help each other be on that one accord. Yeah. So that's, that awesome. that's how I see, that's how I see that. Like there's a whole bunch of components that go hand in hand, but y'all, y'all need to just get a little deeper and give God a hug. Just going, just like, just bring it in, big guy. Hug me, hug me, hug me. <laughs> right? I'll take all of the Lord's hugs. Oh man. So, yeah, that is. I feel like that pretty much sums it up for this week. So I'm trying to do a quick recap if I can remember my phone password. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so, right, friends who plug you, recommend you, remind you, you can do anything, and then also on the flip side. Are you the friend that helps plug others, recommend them, and remind the people that you truly do care about that they can do anything? Um, and just being mindful of those qualities as well, as well, checking our motives, right? Can, what are we really, sorry, I skipped. Am I too comfortable? And what I'm doing, I may be coming too complacent, you know, and what am I being comfortable in, right? You can be in a pot. <laughs> you can be in a pot of boiling water and not realize, say, you're cooking. You know what I mean? So there that is. Um, as well, checking our motives. Check yourself for you wreck yourself, all right? <laughs> Always check your motives with anything, even down to a brush of teeth, right? I check myself like, yo, my nigga, you're just rubbing this shit. You need to really... Give love to each corner of your mouth because you eat with all corners of your mouth. Checking myself and all, you can apply it to any, any literal division of your life. And after all that said and done, not necessarily that it's the last steps, but can God trust you with the power that like you are requesting or that you are asking to be tapped into, right? We want to be tapped into all this. Oh, I want to be like Beyonce. But do you, do you want that much power? (laughs) Right? So really reflecting on those things. And I hope that, you know, this conversation is definitely giving me even more. I know we came up with the show, but it's giving me even more to deep dive and reflect into. So I hope you guys at home are blessed and you received anything of anything (laughs) within this conversation today. Um, Killa? Yeah. This is a great episode, a great conversation. I'm going back to smoking another thing, and then we're gonna go adult, you know. <laughs> I did a lot of adulting yesterday, uh, and I have a seminar that I gotta finish up today. But anywho, so um, with that being said, let us know. We love and love and love and love the feedback, guys. So really appreciate it. I see through the numbers, you guys are really rocking with um, these transparent conversations. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Be sure to continuously let us know what you think, how you feel in. Um, it's an open conversation. Like, yeah, we're here, but um, like it, it's a conversation with all of us. You guys make sure to shower Kella with love on her Twitter and her socials. She'll she will be back, but nevertheless, send it out there. <laughs> she and, out. You never know. You never know. It's kind of good out here outside the ghetto. Just saying right um any last words you want to say for this week's episode killer no not particularly live good love compassion light harmony unconditional love inside and out right right um wishing you guys an amazing week let's try our best to um, be mindful and your own